This video is the first in a series of steampunk themed tutorials that I'll be posting throughout the summer. The first video focuses on a miniature cello, music stand, and a cat. So let's get started with the cello. In approaching how to build the cello, I first started by looking at an image of an actual cello and looking at the overall shapes and looking at how I could break it apart into component pieces, uh, smaller pieces that then I could put back together that would give you the sense of a cello. It doesn't have to be identical to a real cello. I mean, it's supposed to be a fantasy piece. Um, so I basically just started gathering bits and pieces that I thought might work. And if you look at at number two, the image there, um, you can see where I've started laying things out. In my mind, there was the bottom of the cello, which is fatter. Then there was the middle of the cello, which is kind of skinny. And then the top of the cello, which is not quite as skinny as or fat as the bottom. And then you have the long neck. And it's kind of almost like a body, like a human body, a woman's body. So, um, even though I laid some things out, you'll notice in the final version, I didn't necessarily use everything that I first laid out and I incorporated uh, new things that weren't part of what I laid out. It's just kind of uh, an initial planning just to kind of figure out, okay, what kinds of things should I be looking for to, to make, up, um, make up the cello? Another thing to um, consider is that uh, you could use paper images and chipboard. Um, particularly if you don't have enough metal bits and pieces. Uh, that's an option and, and you can, when you blend that in and if you do a good job of painting it, then uh, it will look like metal just like the rest of it and you won't be able to, to tell the difference. In fact, there is a piece of chipboard in this and um, see if you can figure it out. I'll tell you when we get to that part. Um, and then think of using non-traditional steampunk items. I mean, you, you always think of clocks and watches and gears and things like that. But, you know, there are other things like, for example, um, the, the, the buckle at the top of the neck. See, that, that's a, it's a miniature buckle. So it, you wouldn't maybe necessarily think steampunk. Um, so just keep your mind open to the shape, not necessarily, oh, I've got to have gears and clocks. Um, so that's really what's important. You just want to recreate the shape of the cello using bits and pieces of whatever. Um, also another thing you might want to think about is that if you mix up the color of the metal, so say you've got gold on top of silver or different tones of gold on top of each other, or different tones of um, silver on top of each other, then your component parts will pop. So that's, that's another thing to um, think about. So let's move on to starting to construct the bottom. To construct the bottom, I started with pocket watch parts. So the big round piece is the basic structure of the pocket watch. And then there are two other pieces that I that I used, tried to find ones that were relatively close in size. They're not perfectly in size. If you'll notice, they're, they're shaped slightly differently. And the one on the right, or excuse me, the left is, is bigger than the one on the right and um, I ended up gluing those on top of that round centerpiece and that kind of gave me that fat shape. Now when you're, when you're um, constructing this you can go a couple of ways. I pretty much glued almost everything in the cello but you might think about um, if you can solder some of the pieces depending on how you're putting it together. Glue might not be enough to hold it so Think about that if you're able to solder. Otherwise, um, I would suggest that you use a really strong glue like E6000 or um, some of the other jewelry glues are good. So just think about this, you know, you're gonna want these pieces to hold. Then if you look at number three, then I start looking for other things that I could add. And um, the first thing you see there is a, a little uh, shaped, uh, curved shaped gold piece. It's the same type of piece in the watch as the two silver ones. It's just gold and a little bit different shape. So I would put that on top. And then you can see that I pulled a couple of things like the spring and one of these weird gears with the, with the has a spring in the middle. It has little bumps around it. And then maybe something you would think of uh, traditionally as a gear. And then if you look at number four, you can see how I've added those pieces um, on top of that basic shape. Now, if you look at number five, um, you'll see the back side, and you can see there's a, a metal piece that I glued onto the back side. Now, the purpose of this is 
in constructing this, I've got to think about not just the shapes, but how am I going to connect all the pieces together? So that bit of metal, it doesn't matter what it looks like, it's all about giving me a surface to glue the center piece on to the bottom piece. Now, if you look at number six, that is the actual finished piece. And so um, if you think about that compared to my original layout, you can see that I have added um, a lot more things that weren't there. And some of the things that I originally planned to add, I didn't add. So it's kind of a process that evolves where I'm maybe not editing out some things or maybe adding some things. And as I look at it and I walk away from it and I come back, I'm like, oh, I need some more here. I need some more there. You know, I need to cover up this hole with a little with a little piece of something or um, I need to add one more gear that would look better. So um, just think about how as you as you look at it, refining it and adding, um, you know, more colors like I wanted to make sure there was some copper and some silver and some gold and they all kind of laid on top of each other. Now here's the construction of the top section and in number one you see a gear that I've just used part of it, snip part of it away and then you see another gear. Now I don't know whether you guessed it right or not but the gear that I snipped away in number one is the chipboard gear and you can see that I've painted it with some grays and oranges and whatnot to make it look like it's rusted so I think in when it's incorporated in the overall piece I think it really stands up and looks like it's a piece of metal just like everything else. Then if you look at number two, you kind of see the basic pieces. I've, I've glued the chipboard piece on top of the, um, on the gear, and then you see the spring and another gear. And uh, if you look at number three, you can see those all stacked on top of each other. Um, now in terms of the chipboard gears, Alpha Stamps does carry this sheet of chipboard gears. You can either use it like a sheet as a backdrop for something or you can cut those apart and that's where I got that gear from. I just cut one of those gears out to to make the, the gear in number one that I used to assemble the top. Um, now if you move down to number four, now I'm actually looking at the top that's going to be on the end of the neck and here you can see the buckle and then I've got this other little piece of something. I'm not quite sure where that came from because I bought a big junk box of just little bitty pieces of junk. So I don't know if that's a clock part or not, but um, uh, I just thought that would work well placed on top of the, um, on the buckle. And then I've got, I think those things are little pistons or something. Uh, those are clock pieces, the four little pieces. And so if you look number five, you can see how I put them all together. And actually that's upside down. It's it's really, I end up adding it to the neck the other way around. But um, but anyway, you can see the whatever piece that is, that little piece of junk on top of the buckle, and then the clock pieces on each side. Then number six is um, a piece of metal that I had, I think it came off of um, a train, a, a miniature train. My husband had some miniature trains and a couple of the engines were no good. And so I cannibalized them, which is, that's another one of those things, you know, anything that you has metal in it, don't throw it away take it apart and see if the, there's something in it, especially things like hair dryers and stuff like that because they always have co coils and, and things that you can use. So this kind of had that shape of the neck of the cello. And so um, I ended up using that. And if you look at number seven, I want to point out something. If you compare it to number three, you can see number three, I've already put the three pieces together, the three, the, the two gears, actually the three gears and the one spring. Well, once I looked at this and decided that was going to be my neck piece for sure, I'm like, oh, I want that underneath that last gear. So I ended up pulling that last gear off and then putting the neck underneath that and then gluing that back on. So, you know, you can change your mind. I do all the time. And then uh, number eight, you can see this is the final version. So you can see the whole neck piece and you can see that top piece with the buckle um, attached to that. Now we have the middle section. If you look at number one, that is the pictures from the first thing that I talked about, the, the uh, bottom of the cello. So that's just a repeat picture, just to put it back in your mind of what that looked like. And then as you can see the back side of that, that's where I added that extra piece of metal. And then number two is what I decided would be the main centerpiece. Now in my first layout, I had this black clock and I just decided it did not look good. Um, I thought this beat up kind of coppery gold colored uh, clock face was better. And then um, I've got one of those spring things, sprockety spring things. And that's kind of gonna kind of be my little centerpiece. And then uh, I put those on top, one on top of the each, each other. And then in number three, if you look on the back side, you can see that I've glued that clock to the bottom piece. And then I've added another piece of metal because now I've got to attach the top to the middle. 
And then you can also see there's a little piece of just junk metal. Now when I went to glue the clock face on, it's kind of concave, so it didn't fit flat against the piece of metal that I put on the bottom. So I had to kind of shim it by putting a little piece of metal in between um, in between that piece and that the concave clock so that, that it would fit flush. Of course, if you didn't have something like that, you could always just paint a piece of chipboard and stick that in there because you don't really care that much about the back. And then if you look at number four, you can see, uh, if you flip it over, that's how it looks. It, it has the, the um, center piece now attached to the base. Now, I needed to make that curved area of the cello because, I mean, you can put a center and a top, but it still, to me, doesn't look like a cello without some kind of curve going on. And the way I achieved that is I used some copper beads. They come this way. They come curved. And uh, as luck would have it, the set that I bought had two different beads, one a little bit longer than the other and one larger than the other, and the little one happened to be able to slide into the big one. So what I did was I made two sets of the larger beads, in number six you see those at the top, and I glued three together. And the reason I did that is you need a surface, a big enough surface, to glue those on the side of the cello. One bead is not enough, so I, and I think it looked better anyway. Um, so I did three beads, and then to the very center of those three beads, I took the little ones and ran them in the center. So if you look at number seven, um, I've shown you where it attaches to um, the sides of the bottom and the center. And if you look at number eight, I give you a side view where you can see the three long beads and then you see the two small beads going inside. Now I added glue to keep those where I wanted them. And then on the end, you have a couple of different, uh, some more clock piece uh, pieces from a, 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 a pocket watch on the ends just to dress that up. And again, this is one of those things that if you can solder, you might want to think about that. But if you're going to glue it, I did glue it. Um, so there's nothing in this clock that I soldered. So it it's to prove to you that if you can't solder that you could put this together if you just use good glues. Um, so you can kind of see how I created that curve um, between the uh, bottom and what's going to end up being the top of the cello. Now the final step is to add the top to the middle piece and if you look at number one you can see the image again of the bottom and center combined with the metal piece sticking up at the top which is what I used in number two to attach the faux gear, the chipboard gear and the other gears and springs and the neck and uh, the very top piece that was made up of a buckle uh, that ends up getting glued onto that piece of metal. And now once I had the pieces all assembled, I looked at it again and, and decided it needed a little something more to kind of connect the overall look of the piece from the very top to the bottom. And so I decided to use um, the piece in number three, which is another piece from um, a miniature railroad uh, engine that I told you I tore apart. So I think this is part of the, get, the thing that makes the uh, wheels turn. And so I attached that to the top piece and to the bottom. And then that, to me, that kind of gave it a connection and a better flow all the way up and down. Now, look at, up at the top in number four. I also want to point out that uh, once I attached the top, I noticed that the curved pieces, they didn't go quite high enough to get a really good attach point to that faux gear. So I ended up adding two more beads to the top of the curve so that I would get a better surface to glue to um, the faux gear in the back. Um, and then also look at the bottom. I used a clock piston for the spike that goes at the bottom of the cello that you know that, that the cello is held and it stands on that. So that kind of looks like that to me. And then you might also just want to compare number four to number one. When you look at the bottom, you'll see that some of the empty holes, I put little, um, a lot of those are the little stems from watches. Um, I added, uh, I think maybe one or two more gears. Um, uh, I jazzed up the bottom that where the piston was attached. I put a little round piece and another uh, uh, tie for the uh, or a twist thing for the uh, for a, 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 a watch. So I just kind of looked at it again and said, okay, you know, last touches. What else does it need? Let's you know make it look finished and polished. And then now we have a picture of the back of the cello. I just thought you might like to see the whole thing assembled, and it gives you a really good view of how the two metal pieces helped combine um, the top, bottom, and middle. And you also get a look at, this, at the neck and um, of how I finally did the attachment at the top 
with the two beads. So that is the cello. Now let's move on to the music stand. Now we have the music stand. In number one, you can see the back view. This is the top. I just used this block of metal that I had, junk piece of metal, and I attached a set of wires. Now these were already bent this way, so I didn't do that, but of course you could bend your own wires. And this is going to serve as the back that holds the, um, the music in place. And of course there's a lot of other things you could use. You could use pin nibs, you could use um, clock hands, you could use a piece of filigree, uh, just anything that you want to just be the back of it. I, I liked the wire because it was kind of an open feel and it, and it seemed, it felt more steampunky to me. So that's why I chose to use the wire. And then of course you don't want to see the ugly glue spots and all that. So um, in the second uh, thing here, number two, I glued a strip of metal across all of that so um, that you didn't see it. And then if you move to number three, um, now I need to dress up the front of the metal block and I've used something that, an unconventional thing that you might not think of that I was talking about earlier and that's a tie clasp. So that middle thing there, that's an old tie clasp. And then I've added a musical charm to the center just to dress it up and it kind of says more about what it is. Then if you look at number four, um, this is another one of those clock center of a, of a pocket watch and it didn't have anything on it. And so I just started adding gears and metal pieces and stuff that came from pocket watches and from wrist watches and just kind of junked it up to make it look like it was more mechanical. And then in terms of connecting the top to the bottom, if you look at number five, let's start at the top. I had just a piece of junk metal that had a hole in it. And so I needed something that would support the, the, ba the top of the music stand and also something that I could stick a rod through. Now I'm constructing this rod with pieces because I didn't have anything that was exactly the height that I needed. And plus I think it looks better anyway for it to be a combination of things rather than one thing. So it does look more constructed. So then you see a metal rod that goes up and into it. Now that wasn't long enough. So then I have another metal piece that that has a hole in the top and the bottom. So that way I could stick the top rod in the top hole and another little rod that, that looks like a, like a screw, but it's not. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't have a screw head or anything like that. It's just a piece of junk metal. And that is sticking in the bottom of that uh, metal piece. And then uh, I put a base on that. Now, if you look at, go back to look at number four and you can see the red line going between the two, Number four gives you a better picture of that base, and I just uh, glued that to the pocket watch main base for the whole thing. And so that's how the rod um, is connected and also uh, supports the top. So you can see the two of those. And that's just a simple way to create a music stand. The miniature music sheets that you see in the picture uh, that I put on both the chair and on uh, the music stand, those all come from my uh, collage sheet, uh, books, letters, music, and parchment. And uh, you can also find those same images on in a digital kit, which has much more. Uh, it has all the books and things like that too, and they're all miniature sized. And that's called Old Books and Papers Digital Kit. There is also uh, a miniature book uh, collage sheet as well. So, but I'll bring, I'll show you that later on when when you see me use it in future projects. I started by working on the cat's face, and I wanted it to have chubby cheeks. So in number one, you can see that I first started with a gold gear, which gives me a surface to mount the pieces on. And then I've used uh, three different um, gear gizmo things that I've stacked. I've got the, the, uh, the, the one in the back, and then you've got the silver ones, and then they've got the two, uh, looks like brass colored um, round things. Those are actually watch stems, but they look a lot like brads, so I think you could just snip off the back of a brad and use that as well. And then next to that you see what I came up with for a mouth and a nose. The the mouth part, that the pewter looking thing, that's just a clip. And then uh, I had in the box of junk I bought, I had that, it, that little silver colored thing and it kind of gave me the idea of a nose up at the top, so I decided that was my nose and my mouth. Now, if you move on to number two, you're going to see the nose and mouth have now been glued onto the uh, gold 
gear and now I've added some more pieces. Uh, one thing is the big silver gears that have the heart in them. It, I didn't pick them th because it had a heart, it just was silver because you're not really going to notice that when I'm done. So they were just the right size and so that's why I use them. And then um, you'll look in between going from the nose up uh, up to where the top of the uh, the eye parts are. That is just a curved piece of junk metal. And I just needed something that acted like a bridge that would go in between the eyes up towards the um, the head or the forehead. And then um, behind that, um, I used a, um, a piece that is just this curved metal piece and you will see that as an ear. So I also use that that curved metal piece behind the eyes. And that, that uh, it gives me a place to mount the eyes and um, also uh, fills in the area behind the open open things in the silver gears. Now, if you move to number three, you can see I've just flipped it over so you can see what it looks like from the back. Then if you go down to number four, I've added two more things. I've added those little gold curve things that give you kind of a sense of like the eyelid. Um, and also I like the contrast between the silver and then the gold. And those are from, uh, those are watch parts. And then uh, you can see I've got the green eyes in there. Those are just domed flat back stickers um, that I've used as the eyes. And then if you go to five, because I'm going to be adding the ears, I needed to add a little bit more surface area, fl a flat surface area for me to glue the ears to. So I just used a, par a watch part. It's just a flat piece of metal that I glued to the back of that gear. And then that gave me a better surface. I actually glued it the other way up so that the solid part was up at the top. And then um, if you move to number six, you can see now I have added the gears to that, or I'm sorry, the, the ears to that. And then behind that, I added one more gear because I felt like the head wasn't high enough. Uh, even though I had that metal piece, it just, just wasn't quite enough. And so um, I went ahead, so I put the ears on the back of the metal piece you see in five, and then on, on behind that, I put another gear that's sticking up a little bit further in between the ears. And then I ended up using... Um, uh, jewelry that you use, a, 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 a pin a, a, that I just cut off the ends and then glued that in the uh, clip because it's open inside that clip area. So that was, that was a great place for me to uh, stick the pin in and glue that in place. At the same time I was building the face, I was also starting to construct the body. And I don't think I mentioned this earlier in the video, but I would suggest that you, as you put this together, that you really let each piece dry if you're gluing. And so this took me several days, not because it's several days worth of work, but I just really let the pieces dry. E6000 is what I used and it two days and it will be really, really solid. So um, I just took my time in putting this together. Um, so I just wanted to mention that. Now I'm starting to work on the body and my thought was that the the back butt of the cat was going to be down and the front up. So um, I needed a shape of, for the size of the body to give me that curved shape. And so I used um, what are called barrel bridges. They're from pocket watches for the sides. And you'll notice they're not exactly the same size or not exactly the same shape, but it doesn't really matter. It was just important that they were very similar uh, in the curve and close in size. Now in number two, of course I need to jazz this up a little bit, so I added more gears and you can see I've got kind of a brass gear and then I've got another one of those silver gears. And then I add what's called a balance bridge. And I thought that was a really nice shape for a leg because it's, it's fat on one end and then tapers down uh, to um, a small point. And so I thought that worked really well for the legs. Now this is the front leg and the front leg is gonna be larger than the back leg. And then if you go to number three, now I need a way to put those two together and I want them to be spaced because I want it to have a sense that the body um, it, there's there's width to the body and so um, I ended up just putting two metal pieces to one side and then I used that to glue the two together and then if you look down at, at the bottom with the image with the box around it I've just you kind of get a view that's the finished view but you can see the pieces that I'm talking about you can see where um, I've got the side the silver side piece and then you can see the leg and notice too after I was done I went back in all the little holes a lot of those holes I covered with um, they're just a flat backed uh, metallic looking uh, bead or, or whatever you want to call it um, domed 
metallic thing that I just used to uh, put those in the holes to make it look like it was, you know, holding it together. Now moving on uh, to the back feet. Number one, I just wanted to show you real quickly that I, that, that since the two pieces aren't exactly the same, the ones that I used for the sides, I ended up having to add an additional spacer in the front section because one of those, um, one of those side pieces had a piece behind it that stuck up a little higher than the other. So I ended up having to put another little piece of metal in there just to make sure that I got the spacing that I need. So, you know, you may have to do that too, kind of shim it where it's, where you, you the, the uh, sides are where you want them to be. Now, um, I want to talk about the feet and I'm using balanced bridges again. So balanced bridges come in different shapes. So the legs are balanced bridges, but so are the things that I'm using for feet. And I just like the shape they look to me, like the shape of them look like a foot. So that's what I use. And I tried to find ones that were um, close in size. You can see those are just slightly different, a little slightly different shape to them, but good enough to, to uh, work as uh, feet side by side. And then I needed to build it up a little bit further and give me a better connection point to the tip of the balance bridge, that's the leg. And so I ended up gluing jump rings in a stack. I, I glued three jump rings together and then glued those onto the tip of the balance bridge that is the leg. And then that gave me a nice large surface area to glue onto the feet. So you'll see number three, you get an example. You can see how it's put together and you can see how the foot and the, the jump rings look. Then another thing I want to mention to you is I still needed a curve shape to go further down, further in the back, to be more uh, more of the the very back of the you know like the butt area and the hips and also a contrast of metal so I added another one of those pieces like the silver ones except, except this one's gold and you can see that I attached it a little further down and that's going to serve as that back and hips and then uh, now I'm working on the front feet and again I have the balance bridges for the legs and you can they're much shorter than the ones for the front and they're silver instead of the uh, gold and I also use the same uh, balance bridges for the feet for the back feet as I did for the front feet and so if you look at number five you can see it put together and attached also notice that in between the leg and the gold hip piece there is a rondelle so the foot is glued to um, the leg is glued to the rondelle and the rondelle to the gold uh, hip piece. And one of the reasons I did that is I needed the hips, I needed the feet to be spaced further apart. And if I'd glued them right against the uh, gold piece, it would have been too tight. So I just needed to make sure that the, that the legs were out a little bit further. And that's why I, I added the rondelle. Plus, I think it looks better. It, you know, it looks more um, uh, machine-like to have that piece. So at this point, I've got the body, I've got the legs on, I've got the feet on, and now it's time to cover up that center area between the two silver sides. And I decided the perfect thing would be a flexible watch band. So I basically cut the watch band to fit all the way around the cat, where it meets in the middle underneath the cat, and I glue it together under there. And you don't, you can't really see that area when you look at the cat. So it goes all the way around that whole centerpiece and glues in place. And then I added uh, a tail, and the tail I used a snake chain, and I, I like that because it's flexible and it moves. So um, I thought that really made a, a good looking snake chain, a, a good looking tail. And then I just cut it, and it already had, you can see the tip of it, it already had that, that tip on it for you know to, to be part of a clasp to close so that was perfect for an end of a tail and then I just had this this round uh, piece with a hole in it silver piece of metal with a hole in it and I just used that to attach that tail to the back of the cat on the wrist band and then the last thing I did was glue that head on um, and I will point out a couple little things, you know, as I did in the other pieces, as I look at it, I think I need to change things or do something differently. So I ended up adding, um, I didn't like the holes in the ears. So I ended up adding, uh, some, some watch stems to the ears again. Uh, I think you could just use brads. And then I didn't feel like there was a good connection between that bridge area between the eyes and the new, um, the new uh, gear that I added to the top of the head to, to kind of make it more proportional. So then I put another piece of metal that ran from that center section up to the top where the gear is. And I, I felt like that made it connected a little better and, and worked a little bit better. 
I hope you've enjoyed this video and that I have given you some ideas about how to construct some steampunk miniatures, whether you want to make some of the things that I did or it just inspires you to um, use metal bits to make things or think about how to construct miniature items. Um, that's great. Remember, like I said at the first, this is just the very first in a series. I'm going to have several coming after this. In the next few weeks, I'll be releasing the next video. Um, as always, hop over to my blog for more pictures and some product information. And then also, uh, the link is always below in the description section if you are watching this on YouTube. So uh, enjoy and see you in the next video.